Today, guys, we're gonna be reacting to who? Wait, we're gonna react to the sky, the sky being the jungle wrench. Don't ask why. No one quite knows the reason. This is a line from the original book. I know, so seeing I the Grinch, I think this is actually. To give it a look. I know. And wouldn't you know, I came to a theory for why the Grinch may not be so cheery. It isn't his shoes or some weird tradition. It all boils down to a pre-existing condition. So cozy up for a holiday tale you love most about a medical problem that went undiagnosed. Oh, the diagnosed. Oh, that's that's Hello, I think. internet. Welcome to film theory. The show that's as cuddly as a cactus and as charming as an eel. So, like a lot of people, I decided to start the first week of December by kicking my feet up, opening Netflix, and watching the 2018 version of the Dr. Seuss Christmas classic, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. It actually gave me a few ideas for a really interesting theory, but when I went back to re-watch the movie just a few days later, it was gone, completely removed from Netflix US as of December 4th. And I gotta say, really, really taking a Christmas movie off the most popular street streaming service during the first week of December, right before the time of year when everyone wants to stream it. Do motion picture companies really think that they're going to be able to squeeze an extra $3.99 out of me by taking the movie off the service right at the start of December? Because if so, well, they were right. But I had to call them all out just to let you all know who the real Grinches are this December. Anyway, we're here today to talk about everyone's favorite Christmas villain. Except, is he a villain, really? And I'm not just doing the whole thing. I don't think he's really a villain. I think just like, I don't know. Series of villain is in the villain. Thing. I am asking this sincerely, because if you look at how the characters introduced in the first five minutes of the 2018 movie, we're shown that by December 20th, he is sick of hearing nothing but Christmas music on the radio. Think I've been there. He's a real grumpy pants in the morning who absolutely needs his morning coffee. Hmm. That sounds familiar. And he relies on way too much cake to get him through his sad moments during the holidays. How much emotional eating have I been doing? My scale can verify that that one's true. Just saying, they could not have made the Grinch any more hashtag relatable. The sympathy for the Grinch is drilled home even more in the 2000 version of the movie with Jim Carrey, where the Grinch's entire backstory is that he was bullied as a kid for looking different. You're eight years old and you have a beard. And when the teacher sees what's going on, she just laughs along with the bullies. Teacher of the year, everyone. This predictably leads him to lash out, destroy Christmas decorations, and declare that he hates Christmas. And then he leaves town and heads out to the mountains to live in a self-imposed exile for the next several decades of his life. I hate Christmas! I hate it! And that was the last time we ever saw him. Look, it's easy to look at the Grinch and say, huh, he's not the most pleasant guy in Whoville, but I think by comparison, he might actually be the most pleasant guy in Whoville, considering that nobody else in the town had any sort of compassion to think that maybe, just maybe, it might be worth forming a search party to go out and find the eight-year-old child who wandered off into the snowy mountains alone. Whew, what a rant. Now, of course, these are all the modern portrayals. I mean, I love Christmas, so you know. It was actually a lot meaner in the classic 1966 cartoon and the 1957 Dr. Seuss book that it's based on. And what we're told in this classic version is that no one quite knows the reason for why the Grinch is so mean. The Grinch hated Christmas the whole Christmas season. Oh, please don't ask why. No one quite knows the reason. And while the story then goes on to offer several working theories, like the fact that his shoes were too tight, or that his head wasn't screwed on just right, or that his heart was too small, the Grinch himself actually gives us a pretty straightforward explanation. All those who girls and boys will wake bright and early, they rush for their toys, and then... Oh, that noise, oh, that noise, 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 noise. There's one thing I hate. Oh, the noise, 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 noise. So today, what I want to prove is that the Grinch is kind of right. That contrary to the stories placing the blame on him or some unknown reason, we in actuality know why the Grinch hates Christmas. And it is a valid, undiagnosed medical condition that he has to deal with every Christmas season. Now, before we get any further, I think it's important to go back to the original 1966 cartoon just to remember the extent of the Who's noise making. This isn't a case of someone's kid learning to play the recorder for the first time. Oh no. The Who's instruments of choice include things like the Gar Ginker and the Who Hoobler, which create this awful din that sounds a lot like this. <laughs> Of 
course, between the flu fluvers and the blum bloopers, the one that takes the cake for the most obnoxious musical abomination is the great big electro hukarnio schnook, which seems designed to drive any person to the brink of sanity. <laughs> So when the Grinch describes the noise as ear-splitting, I'm inclined to believe him. Also, what's up with the conductor on the electro hukarnio schnook just standing directly in front of the giant horn? His hearing is probably shot by now. Maybe that's why he's standing there blissfully oblivious of how wretched the sound is. Speaking of sounds, while the electro hukarnio schnook might be a miserable sound to listen to, you know what a good one is? That sweet click of the subscribe button, that ring of the notification bell. Give the gift that keeps on giving this holiday season and subscribe to Film Theory. If for nothing else than to push us over the 10 million subscriber mark. That would be the gift that keeps on giving to us at Team Theorist, and also to you, as you're notified every single week of the cool, interesting, thoughtful episodes that... Wet smushing sounds that the food is making across the teeth and tongue. She's also sensitive to dogs and cats grooming because he... Well guys, like, what's your opinion on this, guys? Because, you know, I really like to... I really like Christmas. Like the video, guys. If you like, if you like Christmas. Oh, it's, that's an avatar. I'm gonna be Again, wet tongue sounds. And when it gets triggered, I, I mean, let me just say, as an outside observer, there is definitely an extreme emotional response, but I'll let her describe it. I've had this sensitivity since I was eight or ten years old, starting with my parents' eating sounds. Um, they're both loud eaters, and I noticed that I was really, really bothered by the way that they ate pretty much all the time. <laughs> At first, and usually, I think you've asked most of our team, like, and it was a huge relief. I felt like but people with misophonia have brains that are just naturally wired in a way that doesn't let them ignore those sounds. However, based on what we do know about misophonia, the Grinch seems to have a textbook case of it. If severe cases of misophonia trigger anger or distress, well, tell me if it seems like the Grinch is suffering from a case of that. Oh, seems to line up. As <coughs> <coughs> so guys, the Grinch is actually one of my favorite Christmas movies. Like the video... That's your favorite Christmas movie. And what's your favorite Christmas movie, by the way? <coughs> Excuse me. What's your favorite Christmas movie? Like, I just tried not only make my memory. If I know show up is on, you know, you should have other videos now. You know, you should have other videos on film. So. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Make sure to like this video. And subscribe if you haven't already. And... See you in the next 